Welcome to Creative Studio. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of white balance. We're in Parkwood Studios right here in Phoenix, Arizona, and we're sponsored by the Photographer's Adventure Club, or no, better known as PAC. Simple to remember. Photo walks and the whole works there. Well, lots of things go on here. Check out the website at photographersadventureclub.com. Hi, my name's Larry Pollack, and we're here in the studio with Scott Hardwick and Scotty, or Scott Myers, and we're going to talk about white balance. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Yes, good to be here. Well, I'm going to start with this little guy right here since it's in front of me. I don't want to touch anything on it. There's a lesson for you right there. Don't touch this. This is a, a passport, a little color checker, and you can use this in the studio or in the field to get a shot, hold it up next to your model or out in front of your landscape and get a shot. And then you can go back and check your white balance using things like Lightroom or in Photoshop and select one of those items. There's a lot of training on that. We're not going to spend a lot of time on how to do that and let the computer choose the white balance for you. And one of the things that I've noticed over the years, you know, watching is both my evolution and also watching other people evolve as photographers is things that are too orange or too blue. I'm sure you guys see that a lot. You see it all the time. Yeah, constantly. And I, I know I go back to my original pictures and man, there, there's stuff I like, oh, wow, I really blew that. It's a developed skill, I think. It's something where you, you're not just trusting the computer, but trusting your own eye in the camera. With the digital world and the back of the camera, um, we're seeing a JPEG rep representation if you're shooting in RAW, but when you go back to the computer, it doesn't always look quite the same and you have all full control to make adjustments. So a lot of us do rely on the computer at that point, but what I do see a lot is snow that's too blue or portraits of people that are really too orange and landscapes that are too, too orange. There's a kind of a fine line and we'll get to that in a bit. So sure. any thoughts on, on uh, how your evolution went with that? And, process there. Well, I, I'm like you. I have had so many pictures that were just way out of whack. Um, fortunately, one of the things that I had learned early on, I had a, a photography instructor who made a shoot under different types of light. So you can see this type of light throws this odd color into it. Um, right. Whether you come out with a salmon color or the blue color. Uh, but when you move into the digital age, like you said, early on, you're just relying on the computer to do everything. And yeah, yeah it gets... Uh, Right. The camera can select, you can set it on auto and you can just let it do its thing. And it usually does a darn good job. But I do notice the different brands of things, their software and how their engineers wrote and people wrote things is probably a little bit different between Nikon and Sony and Fuji and you know, Canon and everyone else. There's probably a slight difference in that and how well they contrast things and not and different looks. So um, one of the things that like you shoot film, we've talked about that on other episodes, is that you don't really have a, a I mean, you're going to have to deal with what you get when you get Yeah, you have to pick the film for the job or you got to go to black and white. Yeah. Well, that's, well, that's why you shoot <laughs> you black get, and white. If you go black and white, you're good. If, well, you, if you're going to do color, you have to pick the right film for the application for the light you're going to use. Yeah, so choosing the right film there. Cause I know there's a lot of people that are either going back to film or still have maintained a film camera. I know you keep a number of things around and you bring them along with your digital camera. I do. So a lot of times, when so. I come into the studio, I'll, I'll bring a I'll bring a film. So you camera. have to split your mind. I'm, okay, this one has to be for this, and I, over here I can play with my white balance later. In yep. digital. So, yeah, they, I think auto is is where to start. But when you get like where I've gotten, I'm dialing it in now. I'm doing things, and I'm using tools to help me like this. On my I have one at home. It's much larger than this. It could be just a plain gray card. You can get those very inexpensively and and hold it up and shoot them. And a lot of people forget to do it. I forget to do it. I'm in the studio, and all of a sudden later I I forgot. To shot, shoot the gray card. So and then I'm trying to get everything balanced. But fortunately, my eye has developed enough that I think it's okay. But um, one of the issues that I've run into, and I, maybe you have had this too, is mixed lighting, especially shooting outdoor events or concert venues or anything. And there's halogen lights, there's tungsten lights, there's LED lights. I mean, who knows what there is there? And I've had some problems with it. Have you had any trouble shooting in those environments? I have not had a lot of trouble, but I do notice it a lot. And I'll tell you, 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 you see this all the time uh, on, on uh, TV news. Right. They've got a light on, on a reporter, and there's a building behind there, and it's yeah. all fluorescent lights, and all you see is green back there. Yeah. Those the are the kind of halo. things that happen. <laughs> to, to illustrate mixed lighting, that's what happens. Yeah. 
Uh, you shoot over a city landscape and you can see those different things going on. But if yeah. I shoot at some of the venues I've been at, I, I definitely can get some weird colors going on. Some people looking odd because they're closer to a light source there yeah. and, and things. One of the things I've done to, to solve that is what's called a, an expo disc. And it's, uh, I think it's out in version two now. I have a version one. And it's something that looks like a kind of a white card thing you put over the lens and you take a picture. And it kind of averages the light color. And because everything has color, tungsten has got color, and floor, everyone has its own color. So this will give you an average. You can go and use your custom um, uh, white balance in your camera and select that picture as the custom white balance. Have you done any of that kind of stuff at all? I did actually. When I first got mine, the first thing I did was took a picture of a wall and I showed how it had that nice uh, orange hue to it, and yeah. then used the Expo disc, and it was just as white as a piece of paper. But, but you've ran into a problem you were talking about before we went on the air of getting too good at your white balance. Yes. It was too good, and tell us about that. So it was uh, auto white balance was on, and it was a candlelight service. And you know, normally when you see pictures of that candlelight service, you expect that nice warm yeah. orange glow. The auto white balance in the camera corrected it to where there was no glow at all, as if we were almost shooting bright daylight. Yeah. And so auto white balance actually burned me on that one because we had to go back and fix it to get the orange glow back in. Well, fortunately, in both video and stills these days that are all digital, you have those controls and you can bring that warmth back quite well um, overall. I know in the studio, we I know with my digital lights, I know what the temperature is, 5,500, and I just dial that right up on the camera. Mm -hmm. I fix it. I don't use auto in the studio. I want every shot to look the same the every same. single time. Yep. So that's, I'm going to fix that there. So, um, so the Let's you know wrap this up with creative white balance because at some point you want to take control of it yourself. You you let the, the computer tell you what it is and it's pretty nice, but then you go, well, you know, I want it a little warmer, I want it a little cooler. Sure. Maybe the landscapes one way, portraits other ways. Um, and maybe it's a very creative shot, an artistic shot. So, you know, what are you, what are your thoughts on that? Have you started doing that with your shots? And, I have. I actually do. And and even when you use these and you get the white balance perfect yeah. and you look at it and you go, that's not what I was after. Yeah. And so you get that opportunity to make those little tweaks, and they work. And, yeah. and you know, uh, you're doing a scene where you maybe want it to look a little, uh, a little warmer, and you can just tweak that a little warm. And people tend to like uh, uh, photographs uh, where the, the tones are warmer rather than cool. So even though you've got it neutral, it may not be, have the impact that you need. Yeah. So warming it up a little bit, it, it, in judicious use of the sliders yeah. at that point, you don't want to turn people orange, right? Yeah, we don't so, want to look like spray tan or something. Yeah, no, no spray tan people, no. Well, no, no, it could be artistic. You want them to look orange. It depends on the artist. This is true. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Menu. Yeah, if you reach that point where you're trying to take control of yours, there too. Uh, Scott and Scott, I mean, you don't have yeah. to say which one. Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> so you're starting to control your white balance in, in post-production too. If I'm in studio, I actually do the same thing you do. I dial into the temperature of the lights. Um, fortunately, the lights I use are very consistent on their white balance. Yeah. Um, usually, if I'm going to throw color, I tend to go with gels. Yeah. But there are times, even though the white balance is perfect, that I do want that a little bit warmer. Yeah. Or if I am doing something a little bit more offbeat, I want that white balance out of whack. Well, you brought up something we hadn't talked about, and we'll throw that in real quick, is using gels to correct balance not just something like an expo disc but in the field where you have or maybe you have lights that are warm and uh, in an environment you can warm up your model or your subject mm -hmm. with gels or reverse that the other way or maybe you want to throw some color somewhere else in the thing so gels is a great great thing to start getting into if you start shooting well I think that's enough information for today. I think we could go down this road a, a long ways. And, and, but definitely, if you're new to photography, I really suggest that you dig into your white balance, start to understand it, because it's where you're going to make the difference between a picture that looks very amateurish and one where it's put you get out what you want out of it. I think that's the real lesson here. Sure, Not absolutely. just trusting the computer and all that in the end, but eventually taking control of it. So, well, thanks a lot for being here guys today. You guys. We'll, we'll do this again. Absolutely. Sounds great. Well, that was white balance. We talked about using tools, use not just trusting the computer to do it. Maybe some things like, you know, cards like this, maybe even getting artistic on your own gels, all kinds of things. And uh, to wrap this up, Subscribe. We'll have more videos coming out. There's a lot that the whole group puts out and beyond even the ones that I'm doing. So subscribe to the channel and check it out. Photographer Adventure Club. Lots of stuff going on here.